Craig. This is JT at Rubber City Motoring. I am here. The Impala's back. If you're a big fan of this car or you've been following along, I uh, wanted to go through and explain what's happening here. So here we are. I kind of teased it in some images and some, you know, different videos and things. Um, you know, the Corvette here, that's kind of the new vehicle in the fleet. Got a mess here like always. Uh, but the Impala is kind of the, the elephant in the room, no pun intended, but it kind of is because it's massive. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be up for sale here, and it you know kind of already is. And so what I wanted to do was do a couple things as far as uh, go go take a little tour of it, tell you what's going on with it, what's been done if you haven't followed along in every single video, and then from there we'll move to the inside. And then I'll, uh, I think I'll just take it for a drive and explain sort of what's going on uh, and, you know, my reasons and that sort of thing. But I wanted to start with this uh, beginning portion, just basics. So if you were interested, you don't have to hear me ramble about personal stuff with the car and all that. But that is all important, too, because it is a full story on what's going on with this guy. So let's let's get this going here. Now, in, in its current state, I, I'm in the middle of doing some cleanup, doing some, uh, you know, various detailing things uh you know taking my license plates off some of my personal stuff out of it you know, that sort of thing so in between now and when if somebody or anybody comes to look at it or you know, see if they're interested it'll be pretty darn clean i think it is anyways now but um you know going through this thing from from front to back this is obviously a 96 impala ss for sale front end here really the only thing that's been ever painted on this car is the front clip um, bumper hood fenders just because yeah, I mean 200,000 miles on the clock it's actually 201,000 um, but uh, billet aluminum grill powder coated black headlights I just put on if you uh, followed that video that is there it's actually thundering out here how about that uh, working we're way back on the outside factory wheels um, up front is a 255 45 17 on the back is a 275 40 17 all four are Eagle F1 Goodyear uh, the GSD 3 they look pretty slick if we uh, go under there neat tire very good in the rain uh, just a uh, standard everything from there is is nothing else really too fancy on the outside but uh, paint's been well taken care of this car really has never seen a winter it never really sat outside it's always been inside since 96 and we are the original owners on this my dad bought it in 96 i was there and i basically took ownership about six years ago and uh my dad's still around and he's you know randomly drives it and that whole thing so yeah it's been one owner car on the back we have the most changes i'll say um the Super Sport Studios extended spoiler that is included with it. That was a job to have put on, painted, and I told them if you watch that video, I wanted it to look factory, and it it does. The uh, tail light modification, the early Caprice ones, looks amazing. Those are going to be on there, and uh, that's the back end there. Like I said, no paint on there, and this is an outside exterior. I'll kind of cut to the engine interior here in a minute. If you see them poking out there, those are the Borla catback exhaust tips. Need to polish those up a little bit, but they uh, they look pretty good right now, so just make them look better. All right, let's talk suspension. Uh, the entire suspension was redone at about 150,000 miles. That includes any piece of it, um, ball joints, tie rods, shock springs, sway bars, um, all that stuff It was done. The sway bars are our Hotchkiss sway bars. The trailing arms out back uh, are the Hotchkiss extended ones. So if you look, that is uh, centers the rear, we rear wheel the best it can. Um, those are on the back. It does have Coney shocks on all four corners. I say urethane bushings on the A arms up front. Um, and what else? Brakes, I just did the fronts and repacked the bearings. Those have less than 5,000 miles on them. The backs were done within the past few years. Those are fine. No wear on those. I have never put on the proportioning valve upgrade under the hood. So as you guys know that follow these cars, the brakes in the back really get nowhere. So, oh, and then our springs on it are Eibach lowering springs. Then on the back here, 
I have the air lift technologies airbags in there. Uh, if you, cause it is lowered. So what would happen was if you loaded this up or you put uh, something on the trailer hitch, which is installed on the back of it, um, it would sink it down. So that's on the back there. And then our filler is conveniently hidden back here. Yeah, it does have a hidden hitch as well, which for the uh, the Buick bar guys or whatever you call that thing, that bar that runs on the back, that hitch is cool in that you can tow with it and you can also, um, it ties the back of the frame together. So you got that going on as well. And then for those extended trailing arms, as I was saying there, uh, Inland Empire aluminum drive shaft out back uh, connecting to the rear diff. Rear diff is running flawlessly, was serviced uh, recently and it does have a bigger uh higher capacity cover on there from pml covers i did a video on that as well okay let's work our way to the inside now and we'll take a look in there as i've stated in many videos this was my dad's car he was in sales and drove it just all over for sales uh in the midwest and it was all done by him alone for the most part so there is very little use and wear on the passenger seat or the back seats i mean we took this on vacation as kids and i mean i think there's probably ten thousand miles of seat time in the back that's it very very low use and it's pretty much mint back deck is fine it's been covered it's been garaged everything like that all the door panels are intact not normally the case for many of these and then in recent years i've upgraded the door poles to the metal there from raspot and the door pull savers are also installed there as well all power options work never been smoked in <laughs> i love that it has ashtrays in the back though that's so vintagey now seat belts are perfect and i did do the carpet if i didn't say that i put a black carpet in there just basically to uh keep it kind of nice and hide wear and tear in that from uh, my kids climbing in and out moving up front um, like I said all this still works there's no cracks I mean you can see it's starting to get the little uh, whatever on there but it's fine it it's all looks good door pull savers door pulls are installed on both front doors everything works uh, Adrian Rogers covered shifter and armrest cover there those were recently done passenger seat like i said pretty much near perfect 9.9 .9 out of 10 steering wheel fine no issues even with all that driving time but like i said one person drove it it was my dad the gauges and the odometer if you are ever heard about the fading odometer this was all redone about four years ago soldered the resistor all that's in there and the gauges were refreshed um I do have a working light behind my headlight switch there, so kind of a big deal. If your light doesn't work behind the headlight switch, uh, check that out. It's a little light from Honda. My driver's seat was redone. It does have more bolstering, looks a little different, but uh, it's super fun, made the car a lot more fun to drive. At about 200, I'm sorry, about 180,000 miles, I put a brand new factory seatbelt on the driver's side. Pretty much impossible to find. And all right, let's get to this radio here next. Oh, okay, we're in here. As I said, the uh, black carpet was done throughout. Fuel gauge fix was installed up here. There's a video on that. Details, double DIN kit installed with a Pioneer CarPlay Android Auto next head unit. Works fine, does a good job. Um, I did do some LED lighting in the doors, under the dash, in the glove box, there's an LED. I feel like I put one in here too. But yeah, I mean, short of some random things, I also have a HDMI and USB port that works for this radio. So if you wanna get that going, you can. But yeah, I mean, it is, it's a nice place to be. Very clean, very comfortable. And I'm gonna clean it even more because it just needs a little sweeping, but it's great. This dash mat has been on since day one. Uh, no issues on there. As I said, it, this car never sat outside. I'll be taking down my radar detector mount and all that, that will not be going with the car. But there you go, interior. I mean, it's, it is what it is, a little bit of improvement, but at the same time, it is super, super clean. 
lower dash is in amazing shape that all came from the details doubled in kit we bought the whole thing from them so but yeah definitely a nice place to be for sure i'd like to show you on the outside at 200,000 miles this glass was just peppered with very very small chips and i mean it was almost like imagine if you sandblasted the glass i had a new windshield put in uh like 3,000 miles ago or something you just you couldn't see due to the whole sun hitting it glare whatever you want to call it, it this improved it night and day power antenna works and there's a switch under or in the dash that uh, allows it to go on and off and i want to add one more switch i put in it's these are all sort of hidden because i didn't want to take away from it so there's your power window switch in there and then down here and that's actually a spot where you don't really hit it i found it was fine that's your fan control switch uh, from innovative wiring in there so that'll allow you to flip your fan high and low uh, manually whenever you want you just flip it and there you go so you can cool down for whatever traffic drag strip anything like that let's go around to the trunk i want to show you back here factory spare never been on the ground this liner in here, uh, my dad put in here back in the 90s. This has always been in here, swept it out. It's a nice little cover. And then underneath is like new. 200,000 miles. It's uh, perfect in there, though. So we got that going there. Extra belt if you need it for an emergency. I'll leave that in there. But very, very nice big trunk, as you guys know, Impala people. Um, you, fit everything for vacation and then some led light is also in the trunk that helped quite a bit i didn't get to installing a second one but that is an option you could do which definitely brightens it up in the trunk even more so that's the trunk well let's get into the meat and potatoes of this car the heart and soul of the impala the lt1 here kind of run you through i know i'm gonna forget something but i will uh gladly send you a list if you're interested in this or you'd like to know for sure but uh I'm trying to get the best way to go about this let's go by fueling first as i said before starting from the back it is a racetronics fuel pump kit hot wire uh that is run all the way up here and uh that's their setup there it's a pretty nice kit i've used it on a few cars the uh, exhaust type system here we'll go over that exhaust end of things uh, clear image try y headers those are coated in their i have the flyer and the bill and all that their black coating here this car never sees winter so i didn't go with the stainless but uh it's holding up well that runs to their high flow cats and then it's to a borla cat back from there um all right so let's go with the the bottom end of things this is a golan 383 Followed up from there. Uh, as far as internals go, it is a cast crank and forged pistons. Trick flow uh, aluminum heads there. I believe they are the I've got 95cc. If I remember that right, I have the receipts for everything and all the info. So those are on there. The trick flow heads. Uh, the Edelbrock intake. It does have a stock throttle body, which I found worked best. Uh, it does have from there, if you see, the torque head system for the ignition there. So no Opti Spark torque head was installed on a whole video series I had there. New PCM is under there from the torque head. And um, all that's installed in there. With the torque head did do the super damper down there, uh, the ATI hub down there. Looking around here trying to remember everything. Do you have the cvr electric water pump that's installed on the factory housing uh alternator is literally probably has a thousand miles on there i just put that on there camaro intake elbow with a k and n cold air intake there f body mass airflow sensor uh down below ac compressor is brand new probably has uh 20 000 miles on it less of that uh, of use the uh power steering pump right there that is a Lee Power Steering Rebuilt unit, probably has 2,000 miles on it, and that is their filter set up there, so that all loops around. Um, it's worth noting that pretty much every hose on here has been replaced, including the uh, radiator hoses and all the coolant hoses by the... Though the red ones are the Bono Specialties, the one-piece T is over there, so you don't have to worry about that. 
every AC component has been replaced. The lines, the, uh, gosh, receiver dryer, compressor, the condenser up front has been replaced. That's new, all working tip top. When I did the engine, brand new radiator was put in. The factory one was actually just gunked up with old Dex Cool. Electrical under here, uh, we do have the innovative wiring, heavy duty battery cable kit. Did a video on that, that's on here. The innovative wiring, I believe right here, this is the electric water pump kit. Yeah, that is, well that's there. And then like I showed you on the interior, we do have their fan kit as well to kick the fans on. So that is all going on there. Trying to remember if there's anything else to tell you that is worth noting. Probably not, but uh, internally on the engine, high volume oil pump. Um, it does have a new oil pump drive gear that was installed on the engine. I just did the header gaskets to a thicker, I believe they were Remflex brand, if I recall right, because the ones I had on there just weren't cutting the mustard. So these ones are uh, like like new once again. But everything on this engine is, is like new. There's not, everything is 20,000 or less miles on here. So let's get into uh, sort of the why and what's going on with this and uh, kind of break all that down. But quite the engine from there um if i didn't explain going back it is a gear star stage 2 unit 4l60e with their torque converter and uh, that transmission is built here in akron it's uh, designed to handle about 400 horsepower give or take so this engine was tuned by scott's performance in kentucky he's the lt1 slash torque head mixture guru guy um and i have all the info from him on there when we did that tune we did put a um, Deutschworks 42 pound injectors those are on there they're matched they're tuned they're flow regular all that stuff they're a very nice injector and we went 42 pound just to be ready if you know me or somebody else wants to upgrade this engine with a bigger cam or anything those injectors will will handle it for sure so um, I think that's it I'm sure I'm forgetting something but uh, oh motor mounts those are a prothane a urethane motor mount clamshell style and the other thing I did have to do with the headers is you can kind of see it peeking in there. All of the AC lines are covered, coated, wrapped, hidden, everything like that. And is the uh, antifreeze lines as well. Because those headers get pretty hot under there. But uh, it's it's been running pretty darn good recently. So uh, we, we should be uh, should be nice, a nice cruising car though for sure. I, I love driving this thing. It's great. And then you notice with Torque Head we do have... All the Opti stuff is missing over here. Said the old PCM is out, new ones in there. All the torque head wiring, um, you can see it kind of snaking around here. But if you don't know anything about the torque head, go ahead and look back on that playlist. You can follow that whole install, how that process worked. But no Opti Spark worries whatsoever on this car. Okay, next part. So those are the big pieces, parts of the car. Um, you know, like I said, I think there is probably a few things I've forgotten. I mean, it's it's been a number of uh, different things done to it to modernize this car, to make it more fun. And it's come together very, very well. And I've enjoyed it. I, I love this car. It's so cool. It's just, it comes down to, to space and time to drive them and, and room i mean this is a big car to have sitting around if you're not going to drive it but it's it's an amazing car you think about the the era this came out in the mid 90s and the performance sedan was something you usually only saw in, in germany it wasn't something that was uh, american at the time i'm hoping because i filmed one of these many years ago when i first started the project the car was a little quieter then, so I'm hoping you can actually hear over the engine as I'm talking. Um, one of the big misconceptions I had of this car, and I've wanted to address this for years, my first video about this car, introducing the project, talking about it, I really didn't expect much attention in this car. I mean, I've had a lot of fun cars over the years, you know, stuff that I found unique, things that I found enjoyable, 
uh, just you know a lot of different things that it, nobody really cared and not uh, that's fine with me I'm totally cool with that having nobody bothering me with you know my cars and that I like just driving them I, I'm not necessarily a car show guy where I show off my cars I like driving them I actually like you know going to the racetrack more than the car show but surprisingly this we'll call it a simple black four-door sedan I couldn't stop at a gas station I still can't without somebody stopping me and, and talking about this car which kind of blew my mind I mean I just I wasn't really expecting that since all the modifications have been done it's become a different animal it's as I said a 383 it's got torque head it's got the new PCM it's got a lot going on with it but it still has the same in my opinion the feel of the car used to as far as it's cruising along here at 70 it's comfortable the suspension on this car I've done suspensions on other cars it's ruined them I mean it's made it to the point where it turns into a borderline race car and this thing it's still pretty darn good it's a little bit more nimble it's a little bit more stiff but it's it actually feels like a modern car would nowadays and this car when I first drove it back when I was literally getting my driver's license it was a little floaty it was a little you know I don't want to describe it as like loose but it just didn't it didn't do what you wanted it to do almost now it tracks straight true it's really precise um, I never touched the steering box, which has been totally fine, but I've heard a lot of people say if you get that straightened out and send it over to Lee like they did the power steering pump, uh, you, 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 you get even tighter on the steering in that, but super fun car, and I don't want to say that I'm going to be sad to see it go, I, I will be sad to see it go, but you know, and the, the response is, well, why don't you keep it? After all this work, why are you doing this? Well, it's it's down to, like I said, time, space, usage. If you look back a few videos, I picked up my C5 Corvette, and I have been thinking a lot about this, how to describe this, like the why of selling this. Back when this car was purchased, I really wasn't into cars at that point, like, as a teenager my dad bought this I really didn't know much about it other than okay it's got the drivetrain of a Corvette cool didn't really know what that meant now this was C4 Corvette technology after riding this in this a few times seeing my dad work on it do different modifications something sparked my brain with which was like wow that is really cool how that reacted to this this car runs like that it, it just was like something I hadn't experienced before so you you go with that okay it's it piqued my interest in cars and, and I have this car to thank for that it wasn't until though that I saw the C5 come out in 97 the Corvette that I was just like one of those like that looks really neat that is something I would like to own someday and now now I do so these two cars the the Corvette the Impala they're both like we'll say cars that were the building blocks of my my car liking my car passion my you know this channel anything um but at the same time i mean i bought this car from my dad to haul the family around to take on vacation to do that sort of stuff which we did we used it for the past five years off and on pretty frequently and it's been a blast but now i'm moving into the next phase which is the corvette and you know, there's going to be more on that. I think whoever buys this car is going to get, first off, basically a one-owner car. I mean, I was there when my dad bought it. My dad, I'm literally taking it to my dad's now to park it until, you know, we get somebody that wants to come look at it. Um, it it's, it's got that going for it. If this is a strictly, as I've said before, highway-driven car. My dad would drive it a thousand miles in a day for work, park it, drive it a thousand miles home and then it would sit in the garage for three weeks and never be driven again this has no wear on anything other than the driver's area and there really isn't any 
all the seats are low miles, all the interior's been refreshed, redone where needed, but at the same time, it, it is it, it could almost pass for showroom new. The paint is, is immaculate because it's always been stored. It's never seen snow. It's never been out in an Ohio winter. It's just a clean, good, solid car. And then we went through the drivetrain earlier and discussed all that. That is an amazing piece of kit. Uh, the suspension has transformed this car completely. I mean, that whole suspension, that was under my dad's tenure with it. That was installed by Summit Racing. I mean, they we, we bought all the parts from them, and we, we sent it to them, and they put it all on. And it's, it is amazing. It's such a neat setup on this car. It's almost like an early CTSV or, or, or even a Hellcat before there was a Hellcat. And now you can pick up a Taurus that has as much power as this in the SHO form, or even a base Hemi Charger has more power than this thing. But you see those everywhere. You, you don't get the reactions, the, I mean, you can't really take a charger to a car show, you can't take it to the gas station to have people talk to you about it. This thing is unique and, and cool at the same time. A few things to note about this car for a potential buyer or anybody interested. Uh, I, I do have, in between my parents' house, my house, most of the stock parts that were on this car. So if those, there are certain things you're interested in or, you know, it, including in the package we can talk about all that stuff i mean from exhaust to suspension to interior bits lots of stuff is is available i've got boxes and bins of everything which will eventually sell and you know if you're interested in that sort of stuff after the car sells and it, it doesn't go with the car let me know uh but that that is available the other two pieces that i have actually three pieces that i think are a big deal i have the original window sticker I have the original uh, seat, st uh, not sticker, but the seat tag that's under the, the passenger seat here. I have that that, that basically proves this is, a, this is a real Impala. It's the real deal. It's not a clone or anything like that. And this was bought fall of 96. So this is a later later one. I believe it was September or October of 96. And I, if it makes you feel any better or you're into nostalgia, I could literally meet you and sell it to you at the original dealership it was bought at because it's still there. It's literally there. I have all the owner's manuals. I have the business card of the guy who sold it to us. Uh, I even have um, probably a mountain of two binders this thick of various receipts and instructions and brochures, which some of it's from back in the early 2000s, but you know a lot of it's recent. Everything is, is available for you to uh, peruse and see what, uh, what's going on with this car. A couple of things I really love about this car. I love the support that's out there for this thing. I kind of thought when I got it that the world of the Impala and the B-Body was dead. And then I, I discovered the Facebook groups. And man, it's... It's so cool, the stuff that's out there, the people, the parts, the add-ons, I mean, everything from the little fuel gauge fix I installed to the the, the metal pieces from Raspot. I mean, it's just, it's so cool that, uh, you know, all this stuff exists and you can, you can still do things with this car. That was one of my worries, that everything was going to be, you know, kind of dated and dead, but it's not. I also love, too, this, I'm driving around here, it's July since redoing the compressor the condenser the receiver dryer the lines and then the dynamat and all the the sound deadening and insulation in this car the air conditioning feels so good it's just nice and cool it works so good and you wouldn't expect that on a car like this with all the engine mods and things like that because people take that stuff off and it doesn't work but it's just a really fun it's almost like an effortless car too. It runs so well now. It's just you put your foot to half throttle, and I mean you are you're there, right where you want to go. And then I mean, if you really want to get into it, it it'll it'll take you where you need to go. So getting down to it, I mean, you are going to get an amazing car here. If whoever owns this, I know Nationals is two weeks away, or eh, give or take. But if it's something uh, you want to get before then, let me know. <laughs> you could always get this and take it right there, but. I'm doubting it's going to sell that quick. Uh, it, who knows, though? I get notes on it all the time. People saying, I'll buy this from you. Uh, you know, you, you get that all the time. But we'll see. 
Uh, at the moment, I'm going to start it and, uh, you know, see where it goes from there. I'll put it on some various places and, you know, you hope it goes to an enthusiast, somebody that's actually going to use it, but you never know, so. I don't think this is going to be my last Impala video, but, you know, at the same time, they are winding down and that sort of thing. So if you are a follower who loves this car, you know, you can always look back. There's the whole thing is documented on YouTube on my Rubber City Motoring Instagram. There's a lot on there. And, uh, you know, if you have a question about this car or, or anything that I've done on this, be sure to reach out because uh, I like helping people out because I got a lot of help doing this, this project and everything on it. So um, thank you for watching. If you are interested, you can either comment. I'll put my email below throughout this video. And, you know, you can send me an email and ask me, you know, if you want to see it, you want to take it for a drive, anything like that. Uh, but I'm located in, if you haven't followed already, Akron, Ohio area. But, you know, it's, I'm guessing, it's my guess, somebody's going to buy it that is not local and, you know, it's going to be trucked out of here. But who knows? We'll see. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Have a good one.